Welcome back to the Self-Esteem and Confidence Mindset Podcast with me, Johnny Pardo. Today, I welcome a special guest on the episode. I welcome Dominica, where we're going to be talking about brain health. We're going to be talking about neuroencoding. We're going to be talking about a holistic approach to coaching as well and helping people generally feel like they're moving forward. So, Dominica is a life coach, a brain health coach, and a neuroencoding specialist with a holistic approach to coaching. So, Dominica, welcome to the welcome to the show. I'm glad we could make this happen. Um, you've obviously helped me out before, and you help so many people out. So, it's a privilege to have you on board today and sharing lots and lots of value. So, can you tell us a little bit about like what? actually is a neuroencoding specialist and what's a brain health coach and how you got into this okay well that's a fantastic question but before i get into this thank you for having me it's an honor and hello to everybody listening i'm excited to share everything that i do and i know so you guys can get value if you're driving don't take notes but if you are driving save the episode and then go home and take notes anyway so what is neuroencoding and where's brain health coming from Let's start with brain health because that's easier to explain. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about mental health and everybody goes, you know, you are feeling ill. You are, I don't know, depressed. Well, are you depressed or is your brain not working in a way it's supposed to be working? And brain health and brain health coaching and a brain coach comes from Dr. Amen. Dr. Amen is a world-class specialist that deals with, um, he's a psychiatrist and he believes that before you take medication, you got to do absolutely everything that you can not to take the medication and medication, the psychiatric medication, antidepressants and everything else is the last resort. And he trained a bunch of us in coaching and using the brain as the scientific approach to coaching. So we look at your basal ganglia, prefrontal cortex. We ask weird questions and we know which part of your brain is not optimum. All of your brain parts are working, just to be clear, and you're doing phenomenally well. But what if you could do even better? So let me give you an example of brain coaching. A lot of people suffer with anxiety. And I work with a lot of people who are struggling with it. One of the things that all of my clients get to do is going to swing for 15 minutes. That's part of brain health coaching. Why? Because your brain waves change and you calm down your nervous system. So if you're experiencing anxiety, go on a swing, 15 minutes a day. Now, is it going to fix all your problems? Probably not, but it is a non-invasive way of helping yourself as one of the steps. I also look at your blood work, which I was trained by Dr. Amen to see how your blood looks. Because if your gut and your blood are not exactly working together and you're not delivering that oxygenation to the brain and you're not delivering those nutrients, guess what? You will not be at the optimum level. And we don't want to be okay. I mean, one of our coach friends says, oh, be in an okay club. I mean, if you want to have an okay life, then you definitely do not need me. But if you want to have an amazing life and an optimum life and have things done easily that your brain just thrives and because of that you thrive brain coaching is it now let's go to neuroencoding neuroencoding is another phenomenal thing brought to us by dr joseph mckeldon the third he is the right hand and the main head trainer for tony robbins coaches and he's my coach he trains me and his people gave us the knowledge he created neuroencoding institute what that is is taking nerve neuroscience, neurotransmitters, knowledge about neuropathways, and psychology, and putting into simple things. So let's make it simple. If you are in a bad mood, right, and you're sitting there moping, I want you to think about everybody around you. Everybody around you, when they're down, they have their shoulders in, head down, usually arms crossed, and that's how they look. That's how we know they're not feeling okay, that they're down, feeling depressed. Notice I don't say they are depressed. They're feeling Mm. depressed, right? And what to do to change that? Well, one of the simplest things to do something to snap them out of it is changing the posture. There's not a person in this world who can stick their chest out, put their hands up and smile like a crazy person for three minutes and not change their state. 
This will literally change how you feel. Now, will it be permanent? No, but it will snap you out of that mood. Another thing you can do is, for example, give somebody a high five. There is not a person in this world. When you give somebody a high five, that's not going to smile. What's going to happen, your brain is going to release information to your body to release dopamine and oxytocin, which will make you feel better. Now, none of these require medication. They require just choosing to feel better. And neuron coding uses things that are all around us and knowledge about the brain and neural pathways in simple ways to give you tools so you can live a better life. I hope that kind of explains it. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Dominique. You can have it better myself. Love it. So what was it that actually inspired you to get into this area? Ah, well, I'm European and I used to live in Poland for most of my life. And when I moved back to the US six years ago, I was at a stage already for about 12 years when I was working on me. And previously I was a coach. I was working with career coaching and I had those amazing clients, six figure people that were making six figures. They lost their job and I was helping them transition into a new job, you know, writing their resumes, coaching them, great, great money. And I was so miserable. And it was so not me. And it was just not doing anything for me. And on top of that, I was going through a lot of things, depression, anxiety, anger issues. I was more masculine than any man you ever met, okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger could learn from me. <laughs> um, I was aggressive. I was miserable. I was a single mom, already divorced. Uh, mind you, lost my son when he was 16 months old. He died, then I died. All of those things piled up and I was just miserable. So I was working with a coach on me and for 12 years and I was looking for a way to get back to coaching and everything was just so fluid. It was not tangible and I love science and I love social proof and I also love scientific proof. And one day, you know, after Tony Robbins coaching, another thing that I went through, it was this ad. Joseph, which I knew from Tony Robbins, and Dr. Amen had a program together. I went, oh my God, oh my God, this is like science, neuroscience, and coaching put together. I want this. I want this. There is like, there is substance in it. So I just dove right in, got my certifications, became an elite neuroencoding specialist. And you know what's amazing about these two programs? I don't know how many of you guys are coaches who are listening to this amazing dude called Joni. But if you're a coach, look at your programs. How many of those programs offered you for two years additional calls to keep learning? Because after we finished with our program, I had two years of calls every week. One program offered one call a week. The other one had two calls a week. And I was learning for two more years. I've never learned so much in my life and practiced so much. And guess what? The results are phenomenal. Not only that I practiced that on me, but I practice that on my clients and I'm so grateful when they say, I don't need you anymore because that's the goal. Wow. That's uh, I'm so, wow. Well, I'm so glad you found the community because obviously I found you. Um, and yeah, like your, your journey has been in, had lots and lots of guy, uh, tools you can use with from Dr. Amen and Dr. Joseph. So yeah, I always, we always emphasize on this podcast that going out and as Joseph teaches modeling and learning from the best is definitely a great way to build up confidence in something as well. And your skills and your tools. Uh, did you find that like your, your confidence grew quickly from learning from these guys? Um, so there is difference between, um, as you know, conscious competence and unconscious competence. Mm. So when I was learning, I got to a point of conscious competence. I knew that I know, yet I didn't feel it in my bones. And then when I started practicing and coaching and using those techniques on different clients, at the beginning, some of them were free coaching sessions so I could practice. And then later on, when this part of my coaching practice grew, it became unconscious competence. But the truth is that I've learned to gain my confidence from me, not from them. See, one of the things that I've learned from both gentlemen is the comparison is very important, but for self-worth and for your feeling conscious of what you're doing and being strong about where you're going is comparison self to self. For possibilities, compare self to others. 
Because when I look at Joseph, I'm nowhere near where Joseph is. I'm nowhere near when Dr. Amen is. So I would automatically go, oh my God, no, I'm not even close. There's not much I can do. I mean, look at those two guys. But then look at me, where I came from point A to point B, how my progress grows on a daily basis and what I teach also my clients. And guys, take that in. Celebrate the journey. The journey so me learning new things and being able to use them and just subconsciously jump into the confidence and use the tools to provide you with that gave me the self-confidence the knowledge was important but what i realized is doing it and feeling grateful that i'm able to do it and seeing the sparks in my clients faces and the aha moments which i'm absolutely addicted to that would grow my confidence because I knew I was helping. I knew that what I'm doing is working. And that was just amazing. So if you're looking for confidence, don't look at others. Compare yourself to yesterday. What did you do better? How did you grow? What is the new thing that you've learned and improved upon? Compare yourself to yourself from yesterday, day before, and day before. And I guarantee you, you will find billions of arguments why you are an amazing human being. Love it. I love the phrase you brought up again, the, uh, the, what he teaches the self to self for progress and self to others for possibility, not, not to mark your own progress. You know, you can learn from others, but yeah, always looking at back and what you've done. And we live in a world where it's actually a lot of us are achievers out there and we, we forget to recognize our, our progress. So yeah, so I definitely appreciate you sharing that, that, that point. Um, one thing I wanted to, uh, to go back on a little bit, because obviously you've done the neuro encoding, you're an elite neuro encoding specialist, you're a brain health coach, is in this personal growth world, there's a lot of let's focus on the mindset, you know, let's let's get our mind right. Can you talk a little bit about the, the mindset, perhaps beneath that, the psychology, and also why it's important to look at the brain health as well as just working on the mindset? That is a phenomenal question. So I'm going to say that mindset derives from your brain health. If your brain doesn't work right, you don't work right. Let's say you had some TBI or maybe small trauma to the brain. What happens is you know that your brain is like butter, right? So when you hit it, take butter in your house like a little, you know, um, square. When you hit it, it leaves a hole. Now, that hole is not that, you know, somebody drilled a hole, but it's indented. And what happens is there's not enough oxygenation there, not enough nutrients. So you're not forming the neuroconnectors. And when that's happening, your brain finds a way to work around. And very often those workarounds are not working for you and you revert to old patterns. Let me give you an example. When you were a little kid, right? And we were all playing hide and seek. And very often when very, we were very little, we would hide under the table and we would think nobody sees us, right? Of course, everybody saw us, right? They pretended they didn't or they didn't pretend depending how creative they were. But if we would do the same pattern for hiding as adults, that might not work. Yet that is the strongest pattern because we used to repeat that over and over and over again. That's why we cover our face very often when we grow up, when we're older, right? Kids, when they don't hide, they hide their faces. So this is all in your brain. And if your brain is deprived of oxygen, nutrients, it's not processing information. If you're not sleeping enough, it's not clearing out the information. Do you know that over 200 billion information a day is intaken by your brain? Not only that, 100 millions of New York and World St uh, New York um, Journal, the Wall Street New York Journal, can be stored in your brain. That's how much capacity it has. There's no way you can process all that information. So you have all this junk floating around. And that junk attaches itself to your mindset, things that you believe. And your belief systems are connected to your thoughts that are stored where? Hmm. In your brain, right? So when they connect, then you, what you think, and then when you think, you feel something, right? When you think I'm stupid, you feel sad. When you feel sad, what do you do? Your face goes down, you mow, right? Your eyes go down. So there is an action to your feeling. And then what do you do? You act in a certain way. 
and then you receive a reaction. People run through, oh my God, what happened? Now, this could be a good thing or a bad thing, but this whole process runs all over and anything you do in your life, it's about brain health because your brain runs your heart. That also has a brain, by the way. If you've never read Heart Math, I strongly suggest it's a phenomenal book, how your heart controls your brain and you can control your brain waves with your heart. That's why in ancient medicine, the breathing and meditation exercises are actually working. And now we know the science behind it because that influences your heart. But that's a totally different story about brain health. In any case, your mindset is strictly connected to it. So that process that I just gave you, what you think is what you feel, what you feel is what you do, and what you do is what you have, can be used at any stage. And you can break that cycle. And your mindset, which is your thoughts, will produce behavior. That behavior will produce, in the end, what you receive from the world. See, there was a study in England um, I can give you later on the journal that I took that from. They took the peer review studies or four studies and it's phenomenal. I'm going to make it short because it's a long study and journal to read. But basically they told few people that they have allergies, few people over 180 over four studies. A uh, few people have allergies, few people had a scar and few people were told that they have epilepsy and they were told that the people they will be talking to knew that. And guess what? Obviously, none of them had that, but they filled in a questionnaire and they thought those people saw those questionnaires and people with a scar thought those people saw the scar. The scar was taken off before they interacted. And then they were asked, were you mistreated? Did you experience gazing? Did you experience different behavior from those people that you've spoken with? In every study, it repeated. All of those people, besides those who had allergies, and I'm going to tell you why, experienced you know, being treated differently, the gazing and everything else, they felt that this was real. And for them, it was real. Their brain concentrated on interpreting behavior in a way that suited their narrative. Now, the scientists later on took um, a gentleman and a lady and a few other people who they called judges. They had no clue about experiment and they had to fill in the same questionnaire. And guess what? None of them noticed any gazing, mistreatment, misbehavior, or anything else. The only difference was people with um, allergies. And the reason was, that's what the scientists think, is that this is not socially awkward and it's acceptable to have allergies. But epilepsy and facial scars, we associate with treating somebody different. I know something about it. I'm epileptic. And if I would choose to see people's behavior as going against me, that they're mistreating me because I'm epileptic, I guarantee I could interpret some of those behaviors as that. The truth is most of the people don't know that I got epilepsy. And if they do, they forget within five minutes because it's not something, it's in my head. So what happens is whatever you believe, whatever your mindset is, this is gonna be the outcome of your life. And it's not magic, it's science. Your beliefs create your reality. So the beliefs can be impacted a little bit, you're telling us, like by the brain health as well. So for example, if you've got, if you don't get, I think your example was enough sleep, for example, yes. you, you're not getting rid of some of that junk and that's going to impact on some of your, your beliefs. Yes, well. because your nervous system will be on high alert. So you'll be more reactive. You'll be more angry. You will not be processing information the same way. You will not be connecting information, making decisions the same way. There is a study on soldiers done, which is quite phenomenal. Basically, with the numbers, like if you sleep seven, eight, nine hours, your decision-making process, in this case, shooting the target was 98% accurate. When we went down to four hours a night of sleep, it was 23% accurate. I mean, there, there are no other, there's nothing else you can say to this. Would you like your boss, your mother, your father, person who's driving you, your partner to believe it, to be living on a six, four hours of sleep and making decisions for you and for their life? Would you? No. <laughs> no. so all of that is connected there's no separation and that's where the holistic approach comes in mm -hmm. see you cannot say oh your thinking is great but you know if you're not exercising if you're not taking care of yourself if you're not taking time for you if you're not taking care of your body 
this is all connected. You will not be at the state that you're at your best. Now, I'm not saying you need to be an athlete. Take a walk for 20 minutes a day. In Norway, for example, one of the prescription meds, and I'm going to say that in quotes, meds, for depression is going to a park and walking in a green area for 20 minutes and doing breathing exercises that's physically prescribed by a doctor because it changes your state it changes your breathing it changes your brain waves so again you cannot work on your mental health on your state on the way you think without working on everything as a whole if you're eating junk food and you're sluggish and you go into food coma, you're eating too much, period. And you're eating the wrong foods. Now, if you get that feeling from food, it's hard to be up and optimistic. I mean, if you're sluggish and sleepy and you feel like you're just about to turn the other corner and go to sleep because you had too much food, how in the world are you going to be up and running and energetic and full of energy and hoping that life is gonna be amazing? And again, I'm not going, you know, don't ever drink coffee, don't eat sugar. No, let's not go to abstracts, right? We, mm. I'm not a Puritan on anything. Everything is for people. But the moment you see it's not serving you, then that's the moment to stop doing it. Because the truth is to be told, Dr. Amen believes all sugar should be eliminated. <laughs> yeah. He believes also that all coffee is bad. Well, there are studies that show that, yes, coffee is bad, but it also shows there are other studies that show one cup of coffee is not going to hurt you. And guess what? 90% of my morning joy is my morning coffee. So I'm not getting rid of my morning cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. And that's being realistic and holistic. See, we are not built the same. We, are, we don't have the same experiences. So the job of a coach like me or anybody else you work with is to find the best way for you at the time you're at. Because maybe one day you will decide to go puristic, you know, exercise 45 minutes a day and do yoga and meditations. And, and maybe you will be at that stage, but maybe at this moment you're not. So how can we improve your life together what can you come up with that will be natural to you and you will be enjoying doing it? And as a result, it will elevate your life and your mindset. Love it. I I really wanted to talk about that because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, oh, you got to have the right attitude and the right mindset. And to some degree, my belief is it's obviously got to start there. But if it's like, you're just, I'm going to work hard, work hard, work hard. And then it's, you, I think Dr. Eamon and Joseph described it really well when they first developed this, like the software and hardware of a computer. You've got yeah. to have both working. And that, for me, kind of really, really helped me think of it in a different way. Like, you know, one if one's bad, the other one's not going to be effective. Um, Absolutely. So it's like the mind and obviously looking after the brain health as well. And just what you just said a second ago, work hard, work hard. That's the worst mindset you can ever have. We're not built to work hard. That's not effective. That's not optimal. Work smart, not hard. Work in a way that it elevates you. Work in a way that you can celebrate your wins. And that celebration is the beginning of your mindset. If you cannot appreciate your daily successes, the amazing food you had in the morning, the coffee you had, the sun shining on your face, the person who smiled to you at the street and a man that opened the door for you. If you cannot appreciate that, you're nowhere in the mindset, even space, because it's fake. Because the joy comes from you and then it spreads to other parts of your life. See, I'm right now competing for a big speech here in America. And the lady called me and she goes, well, you're our two, top two final finalists. And I went ballistic out of excitement. <laughs> me 10 years ago, be, oh my God, I got one more to go. Okay, yeah, I'm probably not going to get it. The other person is going to be better. And they're probably not going to choose me. I mean, they're top two, right? Something always happens. That was me 12 years ago. That's not leading anywhere. The fact that I beat so many people to be top two, that is a success. Now, will I get that speech or not? I don't know. Yet I still was able to find joy in the progress I've made. And that's the key for a mindset. 
See, because if we're going to be happy only and joyful and our mindset is going to be right only when we have the big things happening to us, okay, how often do you get a pay raise? How often do you get to be a hero? Once every two years, three years? Mm. I don't know how about you, but a perspective of being joyful once every two, three years sounds pretty pathetic to me. Mm. I'd agree. Those little wins. Those little wins. Little wins. You pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Praise yes, you. that's another thing. That's an American thing. So I do my little dance, you know, I move around. And that's my happy. I have my clap over here. And people say, pat yourself on the back. And one of my clients goes, that doesn't work for me. I'm mm. like, okay. Good point. What makes you happy? What movement makes you happy? You know, some people go, oh, yes. Some go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there are millions of things you can create for yourself that bring up that joy, allows you to celebrate. So although we say pat yourself on the back, find your gesture, find your move. Is it here? Is it, you know, stroking your hair? Is it touching your face? Going, yes, whatever it is, everybody has their move. Make your move and make it permanent. Anytime you celebrate, it works. And that is also neuron coding. Mm. Love it. Yeah, that's a really, yeah, it's a really good point in in finding your own move and what works for you. And kind of coming a little bit onto that as we kind of like wrap up, but <laughs> we got so we could talk for hours. But yeah, what I wanted to ask you a little bit about was there's a lot of there's a lot of information there. You know, we in the world in general, but we talked about obviously brain health today, uh, neuro being neuroencoding uh, specialist and what that does. Uh, the holistic approach for someone who's perhaps in that place where they're a little bit stuck. They, they, they know they need to improve things, but they're a little bit overwhelmed. Is there maybe a first one or two steps that you would invite them to take or could guide them to take? Absolutely. So overwhelm is my favorite thing because I used to be a queen of overwhelm. What we do as humans, we lump everything together. All the words like all men, all women, everybody, everyone, everything, no one becomes an elephant. Our brain dump, then lumps everyone who fits that category into one thing. And it's only you against that whole big thing. So to get rid of overwhelm, I would advise or I invite you to use this phrase this person john yesterday was very mean to me now when you have only john that was yesterday and it's mean to you it's just one event you gotta deal with no brain will get overwhelmed but if you lump john into all men are mean to me then it's you against all men and you can do that with anything in your life so what is that overwhelming? Choose one thing you want to work on, just one. And commit to it for two minutes a day. See, I'm the biggest fan of two millimeter shifts. I'm a huge fan of two millimeter. I am absolutely not a fan of burn your boats. Burn your boats are usually the things we do at New Year's Eve, have millions of things we're going to change, and then our brain goes, eh, that's way too much work. I did it for three weeks. It's not working. I'm done. And we quit and we go back to our old habits. But what if we change just one little thing and decide that instead of zero glasses of water, you'll drink two glasses of water a day. Just that's it. No diets, no Not running, I... nothing else. Just two. And when that becomes natural to you and you stop thinking about, so it becomes the unconscious confidence, add another habit. Say, hey, I'm going to eat one fruit a day. Whatever it is, I'm making it about food because it's easy, but you can do that with anything in life. Overwhelm is a social construct when we use those words that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Get rid of those world, words and overwhelm will disappear. Mm -hmm. It won't be there because we create that overwhelm. We create something that our brain cannot deal with because it's us against the world. And we're not gonna fight the world, we're just humans. We're beautiful, perfect in our own way humans. So let's take one thing at a time. You know, listen to your grandma or grandpa said, one thing at a time. First finish this, then to the next. So what are you overwhelmed with? What is too much? 
And it's okay that you don't want to do it all at once. It's perfectly okay because we're not built to do a revolution. Revolution comes from pain and disaster. And most of us are not in that much pain. And most of us are not living through a disaster. We just want to improve our life. How wonderful would it be if it was effortless? So getting a coach, a good coach, will allow you to make those changes in an effortless way. Awesome. Loved it, Dominica. Like making those little shifts rather than the classic New Year's, let's do everything and, yeah, not stick to it. Um, I think that's a fantastic note to sort of wrap us up with. And just before you, just before we finish today, I wanted to ask if there's maybe a final point you wanted to leave us with. And then also, where can the listener find you if they'd like to find out more about your wonderful work? Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I think that I would say that every one of you who's listening is already on the right path. But remember, knowledge is not power. Mm. You're gaining knowledge right now. Using that knowledge is power. So use that knowledge to the best of your abilities. And even if you use a tiny bit from today, you'll be better off tomorrow. Don't just store the knowledge in books and in your head. Go for it and actually apply it. It works. Mm. So where can you find me? Well, first of all, in a few weeks, we'll have a 90-day hybrid coaching program that's coming out. Ooh, and it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be combination of videos, worksheets, and you'll have homework over the week. And then you'll have a coaching session and a group session with me live. So you'll get to ask questions and we get to coach live. So that's coming up. You can sign up or you can, you know, write an email to me. Feel free to follow me wherever you are, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere you go. You can find me under Your Brain Coach D. And you can find me on LinkedIn under Dominika Staniewicz, which nobody can pronounce unless you're Polish. So just look for Your Brain Coach D and the website, that's the same name, Instagram, same name, Facebook, the same name. Hey, I'm here to support you. So I hope you guys got something out of it and take one step at a time and use that knowledge. Make it powerful, make it yours and make it work for you. Wow, massive, massively uh, uh, valuable episode today. Uh, I've been taking plenty of notes and that's a real strong note to end on. So yeah, we'll be sure to link all that below uh, so the listener can find out more about your wonderful work and that awesome program you've got coming up. So once again, Dominica, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a pleasure and my honour. Thank you for having me, Johnny. Awesome. So that concludes our episode for today. And remember... You are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence.